Today we got a little bit of a different situation. I have a restaurant that said uh, the other day, about three or four days ago, when it was uh, at the peak of our heat index, 96, 97, on our humidity, about 8,000. I can't remember exactly what it was. But their complaint was their floors were sweating. Only in the back part of the restaurant, uh, the front part, not so much. A little bit of sweating from the vents as well. Um, so I'm about to get up on the roof and double check this rear unit that they're complaining about. And um, I'm going to take you guys along for the ride and see what we can figure out, all right? There is our stairway to heaven right there, guys. So hang on, and I'll see you up on the roof. Let's go get something done. Right here is our working unit. That one I no longer care about. This is the guy I care about. Right here. All right, now we're not doing much. It's a little bit of a cooler day today, so we're probably just off on a satisfied thermostat. Um, coil looks clean. So, let's pop this cover open, jump out this thermostat if we need to. And, um, yeah, we'll see where we stand. Real quick, guys, I just wanted to point this out. As I was starting to get uh, my testing equipment set up, meters, gauges, and all that, I noticed a little bit of oil on the outside of this capacitor. Uh, sometimes that's electro electrolytic oil leaking out of the capacitor. Um, so I went ahead and I discharged the capacitor already. I pulled the wire off, of course. My disconnect is off. So we're just gonna put some leads on here real quick and make sure this 20 UF capacitor is indeed good. All right, good connection right there. 19.6, so we are good. So that capacitor should be able to create a good enough phase shift for our condensing fan motor. So um, airflow, as long as that uh, fan motor is not seized up, airflow should not be an issue. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect that wire and then we will continue with our setup here. All right, so here's where we stand on this train package unit. My outdoor ambient, if it's picking it up on camera, is just a hair under 80. My supply, 52.6. Uh, uh, my return was 71 when I pulled it out and put it over here to get my outdoor ambient temperature. So we have our 20 degree split, rule of thumb. Um, my compressor amp draw 13.1 data tag right here says run load amps of 20.5 I kind of take that with a grain of salt because that 20.5 was probably calculated I don't know in a laboratory using the uh, the ASHRAE standard of 75 return 95 ambient um, so I just, I just kind of take that information and take what I have and see if they're, see if they're somewhat close. It's, it's one of those kind of uh, experience calls, I guess. 20 amps, in my opinion, seems a little bit high. So I feel like 13 amps is just about correct on this unit. 
Uh, let's check out our superheat, 23, subcooling is 6. We got a 42 degree evaporator, a 90 degree condensing temperature. Um, I kind of was expecting a higher condensing temperature, I suppose. But, I attempted to call train tech support to see if I can get a little bit more information on this unit instead of just using rules of thumb. Kind of see if I could talk to one of the uh, train engineers, but there was nobody available. The uh, wait time was 72 minutes, so I hung up on them. Uh, there's my manual. I did go through the manual. There, there isn't any sort of uh, superheat calculating charts, um, anything that'll give me the specs on this unit. So what I did is I just went through and I calculated my target superheat just using a formula that Zach Siota taught in one of his videos a long, long time ago. Um, in this, I kind of file this under a rule of thumb as well. You just take your indoor wet bulb, which mine was about 61, you times that by three, you subtract 80, and then you subtract your outdoor ambient temperature, which was 80. And that gives me about uh, 23 degree target superheat, which, if you don't remember from a few seconds ago, we'll go over here, ours is 23.4. So we are right on the money with our target superheat, of course, using a rule of thumb, but uh, my supply is 51, 52, my condensing temperature is a little bit lower than I'd like. So I think this unit is just doing all it can. I don't see anything anything wrong here. Oh, uh, if you're wondering if you happen to see my 410, I did bring my 410 up here just in case after I tar after I calculated my target superheat if I would need to add any, but I haven't added anything to the system. So I'm gonna go ahead and tidy this unit up and we're gonna move on to our next call, guys. All right, I wanted to take a few minutes and do a quick recap of that last video. Since I didn't really find anything wrong with that unit, mechanically it's fine. Uh, pressures are good, like I, like I showed you, we calculated the target superheat, that was fine. Um, mechanically, everything on that machine is fine. So I was talking to the maintenance technician for this location, and since all these thermostats are on a Wi-Fi, controller we were able to go back I think about three or four days ago when they were complaining about the uh, the vents sweating and the floor sweating uh, we went back and kind of checked the the log and the only thing we found was that they adjusted their set point down to 60 degrees which I assume because it was 95 degrees outside that day our relative humidity was up above 8,000 percent or something like that I could be a little bit off but 8,000 percent sounds about right um, but yeah, the only thing I found was just they lowered their set point too low. So I imagine, and that was over a period of a couple days, about two, two, almost three days, I think they had it set to 60 degrees. So having your set point set that low, your unit is obviously going to run nonstop, especially when it's 95 degrees outside with a relative humidity of 8,000%. Your unit is going to run nonstop, and that supply temperature is going to eventually get below your dew point. And this particular restaurant only has two rooftop units, neither of which are specifically designed to reduce humidity level. There's no standalone humidifier, makeup air, anything like that. And again, I don't do air balancing or anything to do with that, but um, there's nothing in here that's designed to reduce the humidity level inside this location. So um, with that being said, the only thing I found was uh, lower than normal set point. So I advise them to leave it at 70 and uh, don't adjust it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit of something today. I know it's not groundbreaking, nothing, nothing crazy. I'm still waiting to get that aha moment where I find uh, uh, a really cool problem and I get to show you guys. So we'll continue on and I'll see you on the next one. Maybe we'll get lucky. All right, like and subscribe, guys.